I'm at Super Judge and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Come on now. Can we call for that daily bread? I've got, I've got, you know, you know how yesterday went, praise God. So, so just call for that daily bread now. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man. Now, you know, he said he has given his angels charge concerning you. So I, I know God have told the angels, hey, on this day, Thursday, make sure when my son asks for his daily bread, give everything he needs to him. Praise God. So you know what? Now, I remember many years ago, Oh, thank you. Listen, it, it just pays to walk with the Lord. I don't know why people struggle. I don't know. David said, I was young. Now I'm old. There is something I've noticed. I've never seen the righteous man forsaken. I have looked beyond him, and then I noticed that his seed doesn't beg for bread. Oh, I realized that scripture many years ago and I said, Lord, I am that righteous man. And even though I'm a seed of a righteous man, my own seed also will never beg for bread. My seed will never beg for bread. Never, never. If you have any vision like that, just end it right now. My seed will never beg for bread. Not, not because I'll be careful enough to be feeding them. No. You see, I'm walking with the Lord and there are promises the Lord have made to me that will affect my seed. So I, I, my own part is to walk perfectly with the Lord. Walk perfectly with Him. Listen for His voice and do whatever He tells you to do. And when we walk like that, it's not just we, it's not just the blessing coming to us, it also comes by God to our seeds. So you talk about real insurance, walk with the Lord. With all, <laughs> you know, we, we, we're talking about being fruitful and productive. Walk with the Lord. Hey, man, walk with the Lord. I'm telling you, you know, sometimes when you hear men talk, say, oh, you know, you know, especially, you know, when, when men want to complain about their wives or their spouse, you know, say, do you, if you know what she did to me, if you, 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 you oh, me, 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 me. And, and some even tell themselves, oh, the reason I'm misbehaving is because of what she did to me, is because of what she said to me, is because of what, come on now, that's, that's, that's foolishness. I challenge you, you're not working with the Lord. You know, the, the, Peter told us something. He says, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. Hey. Mm. He said, dwell with them according to knowledge. As a man, you can be, and you can do, it doesn't matter. You know, many years ago, I heard Mike Mudok make, make this statement, and it just stuck. And it has helped me a lot. Now, I really can't say I heard him explain it. Neither did I read it in a book. I, I was listening to him. And he made a statement. Maybe if you've listened to him, you have heard him say the same thing too. He said, wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. For some reason, that statement stuck in my heart. And because I took it to the Lord, I said, wow, wow. I've never thought about this before. And the Lord began to open it up to me and open it up to me and open it up to me. And let me tell you the truth. If you understand that, it will help you live, at, live in peace with whoever, whoever.
ever. Praise God. It doesn't matter their character. It doesn't matter. Now, it doesn't mean you force yourself on people or you force people on you. No, 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 no. But I'm telling you that now, now for example, you say, oh, I, I, I wish my wife was better. Now, you know, the first mistake people make is when they begin to compare their wives with someone else. And that's mistake number one. She is not that person. You know, you know, let's talk about this a little. It's amazing how people get married and they don't leave or they don't. I was talking to a dear sister and she made a statement to me. She said she, she just got married. So she made a statement to me, she said, I have to learn to be a wife. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. See, you, you could have been his friend. You could have been his best friend for many years. You could have gone to school together, live as neighbors. You understand what I'm saying? You could have been all that. But it doesn't mean that now you're married. You continue living like that. Now that's where challenges come to most marriages. See, they don't translate or they don't transit between the, the friends that they used to be to becoming a wife. The same thing with the husband. You don't translate to being the, from being friend to being the husband. It's, it's a different ball game. The friendship is good, but if you don't know the difference, it might destroy your marriage. Because you've seen people who, they were friends, they were good together, and they just felt, I mean, we're, we're, we're good together, come on, oh, what are we waiting for? Let's get married. And then they got married, and then they start fighting. And then they fought and fought and fought, and like, why are we fighting? They can't tell. And then... The next thing, they look at it, analyze it, and say, hey, you know what? I think we're better off friends than being spouses. It's not working. So they end up divorcing. And even after divorcing, they, they still remain as friends. Praise God. Now, now, what happened to them? In a sense, we were not meant to, meant to be together. No, not necessarily. You see, you didn't realize that now that I am married to this person, I must change from being his friend to become his wife. And now that I'm married to this young lady, I must change from being her friend to being her husband. So what's the difference? Oh, big difference. Big difference. So you see, the lady begin to take advantage of the friendship. And she's, she's, she's oh, he's my friend now. I mean, he's my friend. And then you begin to uh, let Things that you're supposed to do as a wife, you don't do it. There are responsibilities that comes with being a wife. So also there are responsibilities that comes with being a husband. You don't take friendship to destroy that. And assume we are friends now, we will understand. Come on now. Now, I'll give you an example. Now, you as friends... You know, you don't bother cooking for him, for example. It's none of your business. I mean, he eats from where he is. And then when you guys are together, oh, let's go eat out. Oh, okay, let's go eat. Or he visits you. Oh, I prepared something. Will you eat? Oh, yeah, I'll eat. And then, now, you didn't prepare that food specifically for him. You just had food and he came. So, okay, fine. Now, you get married. You don't realize that part of your reasoning as a wife, should be what he's going to eat. Now, either you cook the food or you arrange whatever you do, but that becomes your concern. Now, before, that was not your concern. 
But now as a friend, you just ah, if there's food, there's food now we eat. If there's no food, if I have strength, I cook. If I don't have strength, and then and then now he comes back like ah, is there food? Ah, I'm sorry, oh, I, I I didn't make food. Yeah, come on now, let's go and eat out now. Now you think it's okay? You see that now? What you are actually doing is pushing the friendship that you used to be in the marriage. But that's not how he reasons. Now, these things, is not, it's not even something that he said, ah, this woman is taking advantage. No, it may not get there easily. It may not get there yet. But it is something is just wrong. Both of you don't realize it yet. And, and to many couples, by the time they realize it, has, even if they do, most times it's even too late. They have made up their minds already concerning certain things. And now it's difficult to change their minds. And the same thing, you, you, as a guy, you, you got married. Now, this is your normal lifestyle. Oh, from work, you go hang out with the boys, and then you do all the, do watch football, do everything, you know, that's, uh, then you now come back home. And now you're married. So in your mind, oh, I have a wife who's taking care of the home for me. So I still come back when I want to come back. Oh, she's prepared food. You know, before I would think, of, oh, ah, I'm going home. What will I eat now? And I think, now, nah, oh, I'm going home. I have a wife. Hey, no, sir. No, sir. You see, even when you look at scriptures, you would learn some things. You know, last month we were talking about how to use the Bible. God gave them an instruction. It says, when, when people get married, they should be left alone for one year. If the man was in the military, he should not go to war for one whole year. Pull him out of the battle and let him stay with his wife. Now, what do you think the wisdom God was sharing with them was? So that they will have children in that first year. No, it's beyond children. They ought to be together for that one year to learn how to be husband and wife with one another. It's a learning. You subject your mind to learn it. If you don't, you will lose your marriage. You guys are wonderful people. Everybody who meets you like, ah, he's a wonderful guy. She said, but I don't understand what's happening with them. I'm telling you what's happening with you. You are not living as husband and wife. You are living as man and woman. Yeah, you have sex together. That's not what makes it husband and wife. Oh, we have children now. It still doesn't mean you're living as husband and wife. So you've got to detach from everything you have known. Now the Bible says, and he gave Mahushia. Oh, what are we talk? We're talking about being fruitful and productive. That's what so, so now I'm talking to the men, I'm talking to married people now. How to be fruitful and productive. God said, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife. Now, he's not just talking about leaving daddy and mommy's house and go get in a house. Now, I want to get married. It's time to leave daddy and mommy's house. And then now, okay, so let's go get a house. Now, in this house, I'm going to marry. And then my wife is going, this is where. No, that's not just what he's talking about. He's not talking about physical living. Hey, listen. All your life, you have been shaped by what mommy and daddy taught you. All your life, you have been shaped by, by their ideas. They sent you to a school they felt was the good school. You had, no, you, you had no choice in that. You understand what I'm talking about? They, they brought you up in ways that they felt was right. Uh-huh. Now, having been raised up that way, it says a man shall leave his father and his mother. All those ideas they have pumped into you. You take it and go cleave to this woman that you call your wife. And now your life is going to prove with your wife. It's going to prove how good 
that training you have received from mommy and daddy or whoever. Now, mommy and daddy doesn't have to mean your biological parents. You know what I mean by that? Because some didn't grow up with that. But you see, whatever way life have taught you something, whether good or bad, Life have taught you something. So when you get married, there are certain things that you will not realize is wrong. Because you see, you see that wife that you have? She, she becomes, she becomes your tester or your testing point. She's going to test your patience. She's going to test everything she's going to test. Now, not because she said, mm, I want to test this man's patient. No, 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 no. It is her frame. That is how God made her. So now what you do, you are the one that will make up your mind to become malleable. Not stiff. This is how I was trained. Ah, if it's not working, then you were not trained right. It's as simple as that. And it's your wife that will prove. She's the one that will prove. Oh, my parents trained me to be eating a bar every afternoon. If it's not a bar. And now your wife is saying, hey, I don't think it's healthy for you. And no, 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 leave it like that, leave it like that. After a wife say, hey, this thing is not working. It can't work. Now, you, you got to look at it again and say, but really, why do I eat a bar? Why, really? Famous old story about this lady. She got married and the husband noticed that anytime she's cooking and she, she does, by the time she puts the last ingredient in the food, she will just do like. And then, and the husband noticed, like, uh, what's this woman doing? And so one time he, he went like, like, what's that thing you always do? He said, well, that's what my mom always does when, when she puts the last ingredient in the food. Like, really? So why does she do it? Well, I don't know. Okay, why don't we go ask mama? <laughs> and I went to her, mommy, there's this thing you used to do. And mommy said, well, I think I must have gotten it from your grandmother. <laughs> and I, okay, let's go to grandma. Grandma. Why do you always do like this when you cook? And grandma says, eh, that's when I put the salt. So when I put the salt, I just dust the salt out of my hands. Like, oh, really? <laughs> now, now, from afar, you just see her do like this without realizing what happened before that. And, and that's how people pick things without understanding. And they begin to run with it. So they run without substance. Now, someone who doesn't understand looks at him and says, this woman, there is something they have sent her to come and do to me in this house. I don't understand why she does that thing. It must be something. It must be a spirit. It must be, you know, all those kind of ideas. Meanwhile, there is no substance to it. So learn this today. You may not have done that when you got married. But you can do it today. Learn to be a husband. Learn to be a wife. As husband and wife, listen to one another carefully. Listen to the cravings of your wife. Listen to her complaints. Listen. I didn't say argue. Listen and listen to understand. Listen to understand where she's coming from. Wives, listen to your husband. Listen to their hearts. Most times people are talking. But what they are talking is different from what they are saying. It's only when you listen hard you can hear what they are saying. Because most times they are talking betrays them. I'm telling you the truth. So listen. How do I listen? Look out for consistencies. When a man comes and starts saying that my wife does not respect me, my wife, can you imagine? My wife, I don't even like the way my wife dresses. Now, you, you've got to be smart to be hearing that this man is saying, I'm comparing my wife with some other people I've met 
I think I'm, you just know a man is being distracted already. Yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. I'm, I'm being distracted. I'm being distracted. I'm being distracted. So when suddenly a man starts feeling his wife is disrespecting him, it tells you he's already been distracted. I remember talking to a couple and I said, ah, oh, my wife, my wife used to disrespect me. I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand how. How can your wife disrespect you? What do you mean your wife disrespects you? You are one. You are one. Say she talks to me anyhow. I said, being in your house is the freest place she should ever feel to talk anyhow she wants to talk. Now, as a man, it is you that takes the authority, and that's what leadership is. And you, you notice, okay, this is, this is what I notice about my wife. It's not right. So what do you do? You begin to navigate, navigate, not by shouting, not by, I will discipline her. That's not how you discipline. You discipline by giving leadership. And you begin to direct and direct and direct, say, hey, Instead of saying this thing like this, why don't you put it this way? Like, hey, but that's how I talk now. And that's how you talk doesn't mean you should continue talking like that. Look at this, look at this. Now, as God's children, we have the truth of God's word to guide us. Because you see, you as a husband, you are supposed to be bearing fruit. You as a wife, you are supposed to be bearing fruit. I don't say my, it's my husband that is making me not to bear fruit. Don't say it's my wife that is making me not to bear fruit. You're deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight to stay in your marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, when I mean fight to stay in your marriage, you know what I mean by that? Do everything that is right as an individual. Our time is up. <laughs> Praise God. But hear me, husband, wives, be fruitful. Be fruitful. And don't look at the other party to determine your fruit. Bear your own fruit. Being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful as a wife. Being fruitful as a husband. And allow God because see, the Lord will increase your knowledge when your mind is set to walk this thing. The Lord will begin to teach you, do it this way, do it this way. Oh, oh, I didn't understand. I didn't know I could handle it like this. Uh-huh, what's that? Increasing in knowledge. Father, I pray for every marriage. Infuse your life in them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak life to every marriage that seems to be dying right now. I speak life. Let your marriage live in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.